when I left, this is going to be an emotional stream today. I'm going to warn you right now. I actually, uh, when I left my house, um, I didn't think that I wouldn't be able to come back or like I wouldn't know when I would be able to come back. The only thing, uh, there's a few things that I brought that I just picked up. It's like, for some reason, I grabbed this little guy. Remember him? <laughs> this is like, this is the only FXV merch that I got. <laughs> now was this little dude. Like, obviously, that's not what you want to grab when you're <laughs> fleeing or like getting to safety. You don't want to like grab your whole merch collection. But <laughs> I'm so glad I grabbed him because like, I used to have this whole shelf behind me of like we had like statues. We had this uh, cool stuff Square Enix sent me. We had like books, encyclopedia. Or is this? Now all we have is like one mock boy. <laughs> one mock boy. So uh, originally whenever I left my house in Bucha, um, we went to... Lviv, as you know, that's the last place that I streamed from because we had been getting a lot of warnings and uh, American Embassy told me to get out of the country and we all felt like Lviv would be relatively safe, which um, I have friends in Lviv now. It, it is safer. Uh, I don't think safe is the right word, uh, but it's safer. So, uh, making that decision to go to Lviv ended up being a life-saving decision. Uh, so, uh, because it allowed, it allowed us to get across the border extremely quickly, way ahead of everyone else. So, um, I think that this was... It was this last week. This was Thursday. No. It was, it was, it was fucking Thursday. What? No. No. It's not even been a week. Holy shit. <sighs> Holy shit. I feel like I lived a thousand lifetimes since this fucking Thursday. So, Wednesday night, went to bed, and uh, a major player in this story is, of course, uh, my boyfriend. I haven't really talked about him very much here on the channel at his own request. Uh, he didn't really want to be either limelight or anything, but he's in my static. <laughs> so you, you might be aware of him. It's Remini uh, slash Arcadia right now, Red Mage in our group. And uh, <sighs> yes, yes, just so. obviously uh, he's Ukrainian, his whole family living was living in Kiev and um, when we were in Lviv we were begging them to come to Lviv we said please get out of Kiev we've heard the warnings we need y'all to come to Lviv right now we will come and get you we will find a place for you to stay please come to Lviv where we are please Please, we begged them over and over and over, begged them. And they refused because um, his mom's elderly and uh, his mom is living with his niece. And uh, his niece is going to university. University was not letting people cancel classes. Her boyfriend living in Kiev, so she didn't want to leave. 
it was yes, complicated. Yes, just so. The fact is they refused. And uh, so we were in Lviv and um, it was Wednesday night. And I was so nervous. I could not sleep at all because all over Twitter, I think I made a tweet that day. Terrible dread in the air here now. A lot of media reporting tonight will be the night for Putin's large scale invasion of Ukraine. Will it? We'll see. I said that because we had gotten a false alarm the previous week and there had been a lot of disinformation going around from the Kremlin trying to fuck with everybody's head. Trying to make a second guess every little decision, every, every warning that the U.S. gave us. We'll see. I stand by my choice to not abandon my pets. But the help I needed to get all the paperwork for them came very, very late. And by the way, none of that paperwork was fucking needed. Yes, yes, just so. None of it was needed. They let everybody through without any paperwork. Because bombs were falling. That's what it took. Think about all the people that are, didn't have the means or like stayed in Kiev because they couldn't leave with their pets that were in my situation. Now there's no paperwork that you need. And you all know very well that that is the thing that kept me here for so long. I said, I still hope to try to leave ASAP. I'm in Lviv at least. So maybe it will buy me a little time should the worst come to pass. How fucking true that was. I will only know in the morning. How I wish I could only tweet about Elden Ring and how cool it look, looks. And I'm remembering reading this tweet that Elden Ring is a thing that happened. That's going on right now. I actually completely forgot about it until rereading this tweet to you right this moment. I'll try to sleep. <laughs> it's like I'm in a different, different mode now. I'll try to sleep. Hope I don't wake up in a drastically different world. Well, that didn't age well, did it? Consider supporting a Ukrainian charity. A good list was posted published on Reddit. I have now made a new updated list that uh, you can access with the uh, charity command here in the chat. And then I also showed uh, Zelensky's beautiful speech calling for peace uh, that he made the night before the attack. And it was really, really a beautiful speech where uh, he directly reached out to the Russian people and said, um, this war doesn't have to happen. Like you are our brothers, our sisters, our friends. This yes, isn't, yes, just this so. doesn't serve you. This serves only Putin's ego. A lot of, uh, we've heard reports of Russian soldiers, once they find out that they're headed towards Kiev, are dumping their fuel tanks so that they, they, don't, they don't make it. And then they say, oh, we ran out of fuel. Because they don't want to fight. They don't want to fight Ukrainians. They don't want to attack Kiev. Okay? They're not deranged like Putin. They think Ukraine is a real country. Most of them have friends and family here. So, that was the night before. And, uh, I fell asleep after that. And my boyfriend, Igor, he was already asleep. He was sleeping well. And I remember thinking, how can he sleep so well? But then it was really late and I fell asleep. I said, okay, well, what happens happens, I guess. I felt kind of helpless. Then uh, I got a phone call at six in the morning from one of my Discord moderators. And he said, hey, Zeppla, do you see what's going on? Everybody's worried about you. Can you let everyone know you're okay? What are you doing? Are you safe? And I'm like, what? I just woke up, what? And I like get on my phone and I check and I see the news. Yeah, it was tagged, the yes, call. Yes, just so. I see the news that bombs are falling on Kiev. The worst has come to pass. 
the thing that we all thought he would be way too crazy to do was actually happening the night like the nightmare was unfolding and uh i just my heart just i looked at igor he was sleeping so soundly and i remember thinking to myself how can i break this news to him how can i tell him that yes yes just so the city where his mom and his niece and his whole life is getting bombed right now. So I just woke him up and I said, hey, it started. It's starting. And he knew what that meant. And we both just like without any yes, further words yes, just so. fucking jumped into action. And it was pure adrenaline from then. Like I fucking got up. I threw ev I never packed so fast in my life. I grabbed everything and I was throwing it into the backpacks and uh, just, it didn't matter what, if it was the right backpack, just what, whatever, just grab it and th stuff everything in bags and uh, take it to the car outside. And we walk outside and we hear the air raid sirens going. Maybe and uh, we're fucking terrified, but not so terrified, not so terrified that we're paralyzed. Uh, we hear the sirens going and we're thinking, what the fuck in Lviv? I thought we were safe. We came to Lviv because we thought it would be safe here, but we hear the sirens now. And then we were finding out that the bombs are falling all over the country. And everybody's standing out on the streets and everybody looks like they don't know where to go or what to do. And uh, all I know is I got to get my shit, get in the car, get to the border. That's all I know. This is all there's time for right now. So uh, I did. We got everything. We got it in the car. We, and thank God, because of, only because of this phone call that I got, because the community was worried about me, the community was watching the news, that I was able to get out way ahead of everyone else. Way ahead of everyone else. And uh, <sighs> meanwhile... <sighs> we're on the road. It took a really, really, really long time to get across the border, but it's nothing compared to the situation at the border right now, which is a humanitarian crisis. Um, we're just glued to our phones. Like, I, that whole day of the attack, we're glued to the phones and uh, trying to get any information. Like, how do we get his family out? What, what about our other friends? Is there going to be a draft? Is he even going to be able to leave the country now? I, I don't know. It didn't matter. All that mattered was getting safety. We called a friend. Uh, basically, that day, I think that his mom was hiding in a bomb shelter. And... Um, we didn't have... It, it wasn't possible at that point to go back and get them. Because bombs were falling on Kiev. And he had already warned her the few nights before. He was like, listen, if you don't let me come get you right now. I'm not going to be able to get you when the bombs yes, are falling. Yes, just so. I'm not going to be able to drive into a war zone. This It's now or never. And she said no. So we... Uh, Maybe please. Got in the car, got to the border, and uh, on the way to the border, we see military trucks, personnel trucks that are empty. It looks like they're coming to pick up men who are at the border trying to go. And he looks at me and he's like, I might get conscripted here, but it's like, I don't even give a shit. Uh, basically, all that matters is getting you to safety. So, uh, <sighs> finally, we made it. Um, Force, I mean, the yeah, force full mobilization had not gone to in, into effect though by the time that we crossed the border. Uh, we crossed over into Poland and um, I, put, I booked like a random uh, Airbnb in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I wasn't hungry, I wasn't sleepy, I wasn't cold, I didn't feel anything like that. Like it was freezing outside, but I wasn't cold. 
I hadn't eaten. I did. I don't think I drank any water or had any food for that entire day. And I didn't feel hungry or thirsty. And I felt just extremely alert. And uh, got to safety with my cat, with my dog, everybody. I actually think I have a picture. Maybe I can show you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. So, uh, here's a picture of the military uh, uh, personnel trucks going to the border. When I was in the car. And, uh, Here's Nora in the back seat, not having a great time. <laughs> well, here's, she's having a better time. I'm sure she spent some time in the car. Uh, yeah, it looks like I, I tried to take a picture of my cat, but I was so stressed. This is a picture that I took. Hold on. Yeah, really good, really good job uh, there. Yeah, so basically, um, I, I just, if that, it probably gives you a good idea of my mental state because that's the only one. So um, we made it there. And then the next step was figuring out what to do about his family. So, uh, God, it's all been a blur. It all just feels like one blurred together day. We got in contact with his sister's friend. His sister's friend was going to leave, uh, was going to go get his, I think his sister's friend was in Kiev. He was going to get his mom and his niece out of Kiev. And... They were all going to travel to the border, the same border that we crossed. So they did that. Uh, they had to take a different route. Like we were on Twitter, like trying to figure out what's the, what's going to be a safe route where there's not going to be any attacks happening. And now the route that they took has been bombed. Uh, so you can no longer take the route that they took because uh, that road has been bombed. The bridge is bombed. Uh, so they got to the border a couple nights ago. And uh, so it was his mom, his niece. And uh, the woman who driving them, not uh, she was not going to leave. She's, she is staying in Ukraine with her husband because her husband... Uh, is getting, uh, is going to be fighting. Everyone has to fight. Um, but that woman's two children were with them, too. So it's four people. And uh, they got to the border, and um, the woman left because the car queue was, was very long. They thought they might have better luck on foot. They started walking on foot. Um, I'd, I don't know how long they walked, but his mom, when his mom finally got to the refugee camp, she had to get new shoes because her shoes disintegrated from how far she had to walk in the mud and in the freezing cold. They're on this Ukrainian side of the border, there's no food. There's no water, there's no toilet. Uh, it's a shitload of people. And uh, she's 71. And uh, she was really, really, she started, like, she had, by the time they got to the end of the queue, they hadn't slept for three days. And um, then yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I don't know. 
Uh, eventually, they at the border control, they decided to start busing people to refugee camps instead of doing it the normal way. Uh, now they bus people. There's two refugee camps on the Polish side. And uh, if you are in Poland and you can, if you want to offer help to these camps, I can give you their addresses. There's people going there. Uh, on the Polish side, people have been taking really good care of us. Um, but it was after three days and uh, no sleep and no food uh, when everybody was yes, getting on the buses. Yes, just so. Every, they finally reached the end and they're about to get on the bus to go to the Poland side to get to the refugee camps. And everybody gets on the bus, but then everyone is so tired. In the chaos of it, we find out that nobody knows where his mom is, and uh, she it seems like she got really, really confused and tired on no sleep, and she wandered off, and uh, we had to have police go try to go look for her, and we spent like a day, had no idea where she was, and we didn't know what to do, and um, there was just no way, she obviously phone long dead at that point, and uh, it was really, really stressful because we were just completely lost. Finally, finally, uh, she got to a refugee camp and uh, she got her phone charged. She got in contact with us. And she was just so, like, we were all traumatized from this experience. But thank God she finally made it to safety. She finally made it. My boyfriend, uh, Igor... When we, we crossed the border, and literally hours after that, the full mobilization went into effect. Uh, literally hours after we crossed, they stopped allowing men to cross between the ages of 18 to 60. And the only reason that we were able to cross when we did is because of a phone call that I got because of this community uh so he wanted to personally thank the community uh for looking out for us too thank you tag so uh we got everybody um into the poland side we were staying in a hotel by the border and uh over the past couple days, we moved here to Krakow. That's where we are now, Krakiv. And uh, everybody's here um, getting ready to go to different destinations. His sister lives in Denmark, uh, so his mom, his niece, and the two children of his sister's friend that were with them they will all go to denmark in the coming days i don't know where i'm gonna go we have no idea <laughs> i actually have no clue uh but keep in mind that throughout all of this uh, that I have been describing to you this whole experience um there are other people other dear friends of ours that have they are uh, fighting they have been conscripted or they are with children and they are hiding in bomb shelters or they are hiding out in their homes and we are watching the constant flood on twitter of seeing our home burn Like, there's really no way that I can describe this to you. Like, imagine your hometown and everything around you that looks normal. And now imagine that it's like a zombie apocalypse movie version of that is pretty much how it is. There's uh, our friends that are fighting. They're not allowed to tell us where they're deployed to. So uh, we don't know. We don't know what we'll, when we'll know what, what happens to them uh none of us deserve this N ukraine most certainly did not deserve this 
<clears throat> it is uh, it is completely unprovoked. I just I tweeted the other day. Uh, you know, I saw started to see videos coming in from my town, my, my suburb. It's suburb where I, a suburb of Kiev where my house is, and um. I'm looking at these videos with burnt out tanks in the streets and like everything is rubble and I'm thinking, I'm like straining my eyes looking in the background, like trying to see anything recognizable. Like which street is this on? How close is this to my house? Is that my house? Is that my gate? And now, uh, yes, Russia is now getting desperate they are getting angry that they haven't got what they wanted yet. They're angry that the international community has, in a historic way, united against Putin and his evil. And that's what it is. Countries that had been historically neutral have now taken a side because... There are rare points in history where this, the line between good and evil is very fucking clear. And this is one of them. This is one of those times where you do not want to be on the wrong side of history. We are very grateful for all of the support coming into Ukraine. But we will never forgive Putin for what he's done. We will never forgive all of the other Russian officials that have allowed this to happen. All of the soldiers who followed orders that were evil. We don't want to leave our homes. We don't want to fight. Ukraine was already free. It was a beautiful place to live. I loved living there. The best years of my life, by a long shot, were all in Ukraine. When I came to Ukraine, I was like, very lost. I didn't really feel that attached to any particular place. I had a lot of mental health issues back then. And I was kind of a broken person. I dealt with some, uh, just a lot of bullshit. And I wanted to start over, I guess. And Ukraine, The moment I landed in Ukraine, I started on this journey of healing and growth. And I felt like this country nurtured me and it helped me become stronger, more confident, more happy. And as the years went by, I just felt better and better. And I was so grateful to have this beautiful place to live with so many beautiful people in it. That helped me so much. I would not be the person I am today had I not ever come. It's my home. But it's too early to grieve. Because Kiev will never fall. They might capture it. They might bomb it to shit. They might capture it temporarily. But this insurgency will break Putin. 
This insurgency will never fucking go away. I don't want to hear another word from him unless he, until he's being tried for war crimes. That's the next time I want to hear him speak. I am not grieving for this country because Ukraine will not die. Ukraine will not be wiped out, will not be erased like he wants. It is a genocide against Ukraine. He says Ukraine isn't a real country. He says Ukraine doesn't have a right to exist. He says Ukraine should only be part of Russia. Fuck that shit. I know that they will never surrender. And he's underestimated it. He has underestimated the situation gravely. And he will pay for that. Justice will come. But it does, it's very difficult to watch. Slava Ukraini. Kirill, I'm Slava.